Okay, I just got uh, back from the village. Uh, I'm back in the city and um, it's so amazing again to go back to doing some Bible study. And I was just studying about uh, the two types of Christians that we have today in the, you know, the Christian fraternity. And uh, there's one type of Christian called the carnal Christian or a baby Christian, okay? And I'm going to speak the two types of Christians because, uh, you know, people only think that there's one type. No, but there are two types of Christians. One is the, the carnal Christian or also well known as the baby Christian. Also well known as the fleshly Christian, somebody who lives by the flesh. But he's saved. Huh? Don't forget this. He's saved. And uh, of course, after that, I'll do another video. You might uh, also check the part two of this, the types of Christians. Another one called the spiritual Christian. And you'll see a very different kind of, uh, of Christian here. So the baby Christian, also known as the carnal Christian, uh, this is someone who has just become a Christian and does not know any better. Okay. He's uh, someone who has just become a Christian, he doesn't know any better, or he's someone who has not been growing in Christianity, okay? So, when you look at the word carnal, it basically means, this word carnal, it basically is translated from the Greek word sakikos, okay? Sakikos, that's where it, the, the word carnal comes from. And it means fleshly, okay? So you can be a child and you have some, you know, still growth. You're not growing. You can be a child, but you're not growing. Or else you can just have been born. So you have no thoughts. You don't understand anything. You're just born into a world, a new world. And remember, Christianity, becoming a Christian is basically being born again. So after you've been born, you can either remain as a baby or you can refuse understanding the things of how people grow, you know, reading books and doing this and this. And of course, our book is the Bible. If you don't read the Bible, you will not grow. You will become a carnal Christian. And of course, Paul has addressed this. Eh? And you see, having to understand, have, understanding carnal Christians that they are there, it will help you to know that you cannot lose your salvation. Despite anything which happens, you can lose your salvation. Now look at this. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 3.1, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. I'm not speaking to you as spiritual beings, but, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Your babies. Your babies, you cannot eat meat. You have to eat some milk. That's why I'm addressing you like this. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you are not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able. For you are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying, strives, divisions. Are you not carnal and walk as men? You see what Paul is saying. If you keep on envying and striving and the divisions and the arguments and you're Christian, then you're living like a carnal or a baby Christian. Yes, you're saved. But these ones are not characters of someone who has grown. You're still a baby. Now, see some of the envings and arguments of carnal Christians. Paul gives us uh, an example here. For while while one says, I am of Paul, and another says, I am of Apollos. Are you not carnal? Are you not behaving like babies? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom you believed? It's just people who preach to you, okay? Even as the Lord gave to every man, God already ordained so many people to preach to all over the world to different people. Now, will you be waking up and say, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apo uh, Apollos, and this and this? Remember, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Are you seeing this? So neither is he that planted anything. If you plant, you're nothing. Neither he that waters, but God that gives the increase. So stop being carnals, carnal Christians. This is what Paul is saying. Now, he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And... Uh, Every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. 
For we are laborers together with God, and you are God's husbandry. You are God's building. Are you seeing? So stop being a baby. Stop being a carnal Christian. Stop arguing. Stop making noises and saying, oh, this Christian is better than, than this. I'm better than you because I did this and that. Because I gave some, uh, you know, better offerings because I did this. Yes, you're a Christian, but those are carnal arguments. Those are childish arguments. And of course, do you know, any time when we sin, when we sin, okay, we are basically acting carnally. We are acting like children. We have already been saved. It's like, uh, you know, in your house, you're not, uh, you know, there's a sugar, there is a, there's some sugar there. Like, just, just think about how kids do. They know the sugar is theirs for the tea. But then they'll go and they'll, you know, pick the sugar and hide it in some mattress behind because they want to eat it later. Are you not, are those not acting like kids? Why not just take the sugar and put it in the tea and do the way it's supposed to be done? No one has refused you anything. No one has refused you to do anything in a house. You're a child. But if you keep on doing things abnormally, the way they are, you know, acting abnormally in the God's kingdom, then you become a carnal Christian, a baby Christian, sin enslaves you and makes you a baby. Because the Bible says there is no one sinless, okay? No one is sinless. Sometimes you'll find yourself <laughs> becoming a carnal Christian. John 1, uh, 1 John uh, 1, sorry, 1 John 1, let me show you this, uh, verses 8. Nobody is sinless. See, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Are you seeing this? No one is perfect. We, are, we all sometimes behave like babies in the kingdom of God. Sometimes we, God looks at us and says, well, Why is this son, why is this daughter of mine behaving like this? Don't they know what they have? Don't they know they want to enslave themselves with sin? And they lose the rewards. Because if you continue working as behaving like a child, you miss your rewards. But of course you don't lose your salvation. You only miss your rewards. And uh, one thing that uh, you have to understand is that when you get saved, the old is gone and the new has come. Okay? So you cannot continue being a carnal Christian after salvation because your old ways have to change. Your old ways have to change. You cannot say you're a new creature and you're behaving like the old creature. You cannot live like a carnal Christian forever because automatically you have to grow. If you see a child, a child is just born, he will behave or she will behave like a child will be playful, you know, break some things, spoil things. But now, if that child continues and is 30 years old and is still behaving like a child, now that's a mental problem. That's another issue there. But definitely, if that child is sound mind and everything is okay, that child, when he comes of age, he has to change. So salvation is a change of mind. It's something that you know that you are, the old you has gone. Yes, when you're still young, when you don't understand the word of God, when you don't understand things of salvation, you will still behave like a child. You will still be enslaved by sin once in a while. But when you continue, you come from being a baby Christian, a baby Christian, and now you start becoming a mature person. A mature person in Christ, okay? The Bible tells us this in Second, Second uh, Corinthians, Second Corinthians uh, five seventeen. See what it tells us. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Mm -hmm. It tells us this: that we become new people, new people. See what the Bible says: if any man be in Christ. I'm emphasizing this because I want to show you that you can be a fake Christian. You can be a fake Christian because you are not even a Christian. There are people who fake that they are Christians. But there are others who are Christians, but they are still babies. 
And until they start learning the word of God and doing towards the, you know, the way God, they are maturing in Christ. Now they come from baby Christians to spiritual Christians. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The old are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. But if things are not becoming new to you, then there's something wrong. You can't be a baby forever. Just think about it, you find that someone who is 40 years behaving like a baby. You will say, no, 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 there's something wrong with this person. The same with the kingdom of God. You can't continue becoming the old person. You have to be a new person. And of course, as the Bible tells us, true salvation, true faith will result in good works. You'll not keep on doing baby things and you have true faith. You see, the Bible tells us in the book of James, uh, chapter 2, verses uh, 17, it tells us that true faith will have to show good works. See, even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead, being alone. If your faith does not have good works, then it means you are not even saved in the first place. And of course, it doesn't mean if you're young, if you're still just gotten saved right now, you're expected to know everything. No, you grow slowly. But if you're not growing, then it means you did not have faith in the first place. See what the Bible says here. Yeah, a man may say, you have faith and I have works. You know, there are people who say, no, 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 me, me have all just the faith. It's all about faith, faith, faith. There's nothing about works. Yes, you've been saved by faith. Not of works, okay? And the Bible continues and says, Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Do you know you can show your faith by your works? You can show this is me believing in God by the things that I do. How can you show that you're a child of a certain home? By behaving like the father. Behaving like the children, the other children there. But if you don't behave like them, then it means uh, there's a high possibility you don't even understand yourself. Okay? So, let me, let me, let me put uh, some light on here. So, something else you have to understand here is that um, you are created... For good works okay you're created for good works you are not created to sit down and just be there you have to walk with Christ because when you walk you when you walk with Christ when you do the good works of Christ what's going to happen you're going to get rewards in heaven okay there are some rewards which will be waiting for you and of course Ephesians 2 8 9 to 10 it says that for by uh, for by uh, faith uh, let, let me let me just read for you. You are saved by faith. Ephesians 2, 8. Let me show you something here. This is so profound because I, I, I don't want to give it in a different way. For by grace are you saved through faith. Okay? There is no works. You are saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works lest any man should boast. That, that is correct. 100%. You are saved by faith. But then, after we are saved, what happens? For we are his workmanship, created, you are a new creature, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Okay? Which, has, uh, which God has before ordained that you should walk with, uh, in them. You should now start doing good works. Stop being a baby. Start eating, eating, and eating. You can be a baby forever. And if you continue doing baby kind of things when you're a grown-up, then you are called a carnal Christian or a fleshly Christian. That means you're living in the flesh. And what is going to be the problem? You're going to lose your rewards in heaven. If you continue living like a baby Christian, a carnal Christian, you will lose your rewards in heaven. There are rewards for all the things that you did, go and watch my video on the rewards on uh, uh, rewards after the rapture. The rewards waiting for us after the rapture. Go and watch that video. You will see there are rewards waiting for us. 
And if you continue doing what is wrong and not listening to what God is saying and walking with him, you will continue being a baby, a carnal Christian, and you will lose a lot. Of course we know salvation cannot be lost. But you can't be saved and continue living like a baby. Because these ones, you'll be losing them. Of course, salvation can be lost. Let me, let me prove to you, you can't lose your salvation. John, uh, John, the book of John 10, 28, okay? It tells us that you can't lose your salvation. See, all I give unto them, all, and I give unto them life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man plug them out of my hand. You see, that is assurance of salvation. When you come to Christ, you will never perish. And no one will ever plug you from there. We can see Romans 3, 8, 37 to 39. 1 John 5, 13. I don't want to take much time there. It is eternal. You've been saved eternally. Okay? You see, many people say that... Uh, People, when you live and you do things in a carnal way, you will lose your salvation. Let me see, show you what exactly you lose. Because I've explained this, but I've just seen a verse here. And I have to explain it. See what the Bible says. If any man's work shall be burned, if you have done wrong things instead of doing good things, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yes, so as by fire. Because in the time of when God will be, give, be giving rewards to us in heaven, and all that you did was to live as a carnal Christian, as a baby Christian, you continued eating sugar instead of putting it in tea. You continued, I'm just giving a literal example of how a baby behaves, pouring milk on top of the seats and, uh, you know, uh, becoming dirty and, uh, you know, breaking things and, uh, you know, uh, cracking screens of the TV and doing all those wrong things like a baby. What you're going to lose is the rewards. Of course, you'll not lose your salvation, but you will lose your rewards. You know, there's a possibility that you find some of the people that you see so much behaving carnally over and over and over, there's a possibility they have never even been saved in the first place. Do you know there's that possibility? Do you know you can be having some fake salvation? You think, uh, I'm just living carnally, I'm just enjoying living carnally, but in the first place, look at yourself. If you, if you enjoy living like a carnal Christian or a baby Christian, there's a possibility that you have never even been saved in the first place. You could have been, you could probably be lost. You could probably just uh, be faking it. And there are so many people who fake salvation. So many. So many. Let's see what the Bible tells us in 1 John. 1 John uh, 2.19. 2, uh, 1 John 2.19. Let's see what the Bible tells us. Okay. It says, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they may be made manifest that they were not all of us. There are some people you see and you ask yourself, this person is living like a devil. How can he be a Christian? And some people you hear, this person has backslidden. There is nothing like backsliding. He went out of us because he was not in the first place with us. He's never been a Christian in the first place. And that's why you see he's gone out and people are saying this guy has backslidden. There's nothing like backsliding because salvation is eternal. So when you see somebody comes out from a point of where he seemed to be a Christian and uh, he fell out from being a Christian, what could have been the problem here? What could be the problem here? Probably he was never, he was never, he was never a saved person. All right? That's why it's always important. I'm seeing this one here. It's always important to examine your faith and make sure you are biblically saved. Don't just sit down there and say, oh, I know I'm saved, but uh, you're not even sure and you're behaving and living like the devil all through the week. And on Sunday, you're the angel. 
no 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 it doesn't work like that and uh, something else that you have to understand a father always disciplines his child whenever you do something wrong your god who is your father definitely if you're saved and he is your father and you are his child he will discipline you and when he disciplines you for your disobedience don't say no you know god does not exist and he can discipline you for so many in so many ways remember david when he went and uh, you know fornicated with the uh, with the uh, was it Bathsheba or, or what was her, uh, she called and uh, killed the husband uriah what happened his father chastened him disciplined him because the child that uh, they they bore together he died and that was it and that was the discipline which god gave to him plus other small small things also that he did to him and he knew and he understand he understood that this is god my father who has disciplined me because the bible tells us here listen listen to what the bible says here. hebrews hebrews 12:5 see this Hebrews 12:5 tells us about God disciplines us and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children my son despise not the chastening of the Lord nor faint when you are rebuked of him for for whom the Lord loveth he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he receiveth God will chasten you he will chasten you Whenever you do something wrong, he will tell you, no, 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 this is not the right way. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? If you are a child and your father cannot correct you, then what kind of a child are you? But if you be without chastisement, wherefore are all partakers? You are bastards and no sons. If you say my God cannot be the one who has done this for me. No, 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 no. And I've done something wrong. Then uh, you're not even a child. Furthermore, we are bad fathers of our flesh, which correct us. And we give them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, after it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Enjoy to be chastened by God, to be corrected by God, because you are children, and if you are still a child, he will correct you. If you are living like a carnal Christian, he is going to correct you until you come to the right way. But if you are not, and you are not getting any correction, there is a possibility that you are a fake Christian. It's not even real. Okay? It's not even real. Now, you may ask, why does God want to Correct us if we have done wrong. Because he wants to transform us into the image of Christ. He wants to make us like, to be like Christ. He wants to transform our mind the way that we think. So that we can think in a godly way. We can do things in the way that he has created us uh, uh, to think. He doesn't want us to th think like children and to think like the people of the world. He wants us to be transformed. Our mind to be transformed. Let me show you. Let me show you this. Romans 12.1 Romans 12.1 Romans 12.1 What does the Bible say? He says this. I beseech you therefore, this Paul talking, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. This is reasonable. Nothing else that I'm asking you, not things, not anything. I'm just telling you, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. And be not conformed to this world. Don't walk like the world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God wants you to be transformed. To have the image of Christ. 
to look like them, feel like him, do everything the way Jesus does. And be like a person who is of that kingdom, who is of that family of God. And how are you going to be transformed if you're still lost? There are some people out there who are lost. They're not even children of God. They don't even understand what some, uh, being transformed is like. If you're living like a child, if you're a child of God and you're living carnally, please be transformed. Read the Bible, do what is right, continue seeking God, walk with God, and He will make you a spiritual Christian. And of course, I'll give examples and explain exactly how a spiritual Christian looks like in the next video. So you can uh, be sure to check that video. But if you're not saved and you're just pretending to be a child of God, but you're not, you're a false Christian, there's a way that you can examine your faith and make sure that you're saved. So what do you need to do so that you can be saved? You need to believe the gospel. If you entered salvation, Christianity, through any other door, then you're a false, fake Christian. But if you entered Christianity or you became a child through the right way, <clears throat> which is through Jesus, then you're a true child. True child. Because to become a Christian, a true Christian, to be saved, you need to do something. You need to understand how, how and why Jesus died. How and why Jesus died. That's the main point that you need to understand. How did Jesus die? He died by shedding his blood. Why? Because without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And you sinned and you had to shed your blood to, uh, to, be, to die because you are a sinner. But Jesus shed his blood for you. And you became saved through the blood that Jesus did, died, uh, uh, died and shed. So, the gospel is all about understanding that fact and believing it in your heart. Believe that Jesus died for your sins. He was buried and rose again according to the scriptures as is written in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. If you understand this, then you're saved. Then you become a child of God. And from a baby, you continue slowly, slowly, slowly as you read his word and you stop being a child and you become transformed into the image of God and God will chastise you he will beat you sometimes whenever you do wrong because he's your father don't worry but don't continue being a false Christian out there ask yourself am I going to get some rewards are my good works being seen are my good works being seen so guys it's really really important to become a new creation and to know that we should avoid sin and do whatever we can do to avoid being a child, a baby Christian or a carnal Christian and move as much as we can to become true Christians, true spiritual Christians because we will get rewards. If you're still living, you're a Christian but you have hatred, animosity, resentment, grievance, enmity, vengefulness, bitterness, malice, anger, and you're carrying all these things as a burden. Yes, you're saved. You can lose your salvation, but you're a baby, a baby, or you're living as a carnal Christian. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope you've been able to understand something. Be sure to watch out the other video on a spiritual Christian, and you can be able to understand. Also, you can share this video to other people so that they can be able to know and learn and be saved. And you can subscribe to this uh, channel if you have not. I always post new videos all the time. God bless you and have a blessed time.